Once scientists have a hypothesis that they want to test, they need to decide what kind of evidence to gather that will help them to tell if their hypothesis is correct or not. The way we've chosen to attack it is to look at its past, because that's a good way to have some idea about what might happen in the future. And so if we want to look at its past, then we need to go to places adjacent to the ice sheet, or even on, on these uh, mountains that stick, out, stick up in the middle of the ice sheet, to try to look for evidence of its past. I'm a geologist. The evidence we look for is geologic. And so we look for evidence of, of, of past fluctuations of the ice sheet based on the geology in the surrounding uh, mountains. Well, when we get home, we have an awful lot of work to do. We, the first thing we do is to produce a map, to produce a map that shows us in, in great detail where all the different glacial deposits are, what their relationships are, which way the ice was flowing that deposited them, how big the ice was, how thick it was, and then we have to go about trying to put some dates on it. And that involves an awful lot of lab work. For, for, the, for the algae, when we use radiocarbon dating, that's relatively simple. We clean the algae, put it in a vial, and send it off to another lab who runs it through an a accelerator to do radiocarbon dating. The cosmogenic isotope dating is a lot more complicated than that. And Almost all of that work takes place in, in John Stone's lab in Washington.